Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Alright, what do we have? Pack one, pick one. Our rare is Dreadhor Arcanist, which is a good card in Constructed. In Limited it's a lot harder to make it work, so don't consider it especially powerful. Uh, looking at our uncommons, Vessel's pretty niche, goes into the multicolor ramp decks like we had before, but usually not a card you should prioritize. Same with Statue. Narset can be okay. It's kind of hit or miss, kind of have to build your deck around Narset to make sure you have enough instants, sorceries and planeswalkers in general. And all the commons are pretty mediocre. So overall not a pack we were hoping to open. Probably gonna go with Narset and then try and build a blue more controlling deck. I think that beats trying to take Arcanist and make like red-white pump spells work, which usually doesn't come together. The past, present, and future are bound by threads of time. Got a few better options here. Some decent black uncommons, Taskmaster, Dreadmalkin are both fine, especially in red-black. The best blue card, or well, the only blue card is Skulker, which is fine, but don't have to pick its second pick. Pegasus is also one of the better commons, but doesn't necessarily fit into the same deck as Narset. The only removal spell is Pyrohelix, which could be the pick, plays well with Narset. Blue-red is a good archetype, but overall it's a bit weaker than maybe the Taskmaster would be. There's also Honored God Pharaoh is another spell that would play well in blue-red and with Narset. So it's still very early in the draft, we don't have to commit to our first pick, we could easily not end up playing Narset. So the best card in the pack overall is probably the Taskmaster, just a good 2-drop with a relevant ability in the late game, and blue-black is just a good archetype, we could still play Taskmaster and Narset in the same deck, just have to make sure we pick up enough other non-creature spells later. If we take either Pyrohelix or Honor, we're starting to lean towards maybe a blue-red spells deck where Narset will be good, almost no matter what, since we'll end up with a ton of instants and sorceries. But then we're kind of taking a slightly weaker card just to make our first pick work out, which sometimes is worth it, sometimes isn't. So there's a lot of options. All right, third pick. There's a Divine Arrow, which could be okay, but Epiphany plays great alongside Narset and kind of plays well in a blue-black control deck in general. It's just a good card. So I'll take uh, the Epiphany here. Lots of pretty weak uncommons so far in the draft, so hopefully that improves. In this pack we have Conjurant as a decent uncommon, fits into a lot of decks, especially if we have some proliferate synergies, it becomes quite a bit better. Don't have any proliferate synergies yet, but Blue has Contentious Plan that we see here too. That could be pretty good. No escapes playable too. Uh, the two drops are pretty weak, so I'm not necessarily going to prioritize those here. So probably good, just going to take the Conjurant. Nice curve filler at any point in the curve and we're likely gonna pick up at least one or two proliferate cards later in the draft. Hopefully wheel that uh, contentious plan in the previous pack. I think Burning Prophet is a better card than Spellkeeper Weird, but Spellkeeper Weird keeps us in blue. So that's kind of the consideration here. Do we take the Burning Prophet, maybe switch over into blue red spells where Prophet is great and a great two drop, or we can just stick to the Weird, which is a fine three drop in any blue deck and then we could still be blue-black, and if maybe the next pack has a great red card, we can make the switch and ditch the Taskmaster. I think those are the only cards we're really considering here. All right, we'll stick to the weird. The upside of taking a weird here is that if we open a great black card in the next pack, then we can just stick to blue-black and not give up on any cards. There's definitely some upside, even though the Prophet might be a better card by itself. All right, well, looks like we got rewarded here, as Toll of the Invasion and Lazo the Reaver are the two cards we're considering in this pack. And the red card, Catharsis, isn't particularly great and not really what we want here, since we're looking to draft a more controlling deck. So between the two, Toll of the Invasion has synergy with Narset, has synergy with Spellkeeper Weird can get it back. Gives us a 1-1 token, although the same can be said for the Reaver, so they both synergize with future proliferate cards. Reaver gives us a 2-drop, we already have Taskmaster, potentially Conjurant, which we can play on turn 2. But uh, it is more difficult to pick up good 2-drops than 3-drops. I think Toll just has more synergy in our deck, but Reaver would be good too, so I'll take the Toll here. This pack doesn't have any cards we're interested in. Don't think Crush Descent is particularly playable. Don't have any other instants that we can play alongside it, so keeping up mana is a pretty big cost. I guess we do have the Weird that can be sacrificed if they don't play into the Descent, but that's about it. 
Uh, bully, not really what we want in blue black typically. Don't have any proliferate synergies yet. So I think I'll take the descent anyway, but I don't really intend to play it. No escape on the other hand is quite a bit better. Much cheaper to keep up three mana as opposed to four. This also exiles creatures and planeswalkers, so no aid the fallen shenanigans. And Invader City is not even all that great, even if we were to make the jump to blue-red, I would probably prefer the Hardfire over the Invader City anyway. But we can just take the No Escape. It's unlikely that Time Twist makes a cut, but if we end up with a few creatures with some neat Enter the Battlefield abilities, maybe. Probably the most likely card to make it still. And now we can take either Opportunist or Dreadmalkin. Dreadmalkin shines in a deck with a ton of cheap sacrifice fodder, usually red-black, where you have the Grim Initiate as well as the Lazotap Reaver at 2. But in blue-black we do have the 1-1 one -one tokens we get from cards like Toll of the Invasion, so those are good ones to sacrifice. Could take the Opportunist as just a 2-drop that also has the mana sink to close out the game, but it's also pretty medium. I think the Dreadmalkin probably has more potential if it works out, if we end up with a bunch more Toll of the Invasion, a few more of the other cards that make 1-1 one -one tokens. But I do agree that Opportunist might make the deck if we don't end up with any additional 2-drops. So it's kind of close. But I think I'll take the Dreadmalkin still. Nothing I'm considering splashing, maybe the Giant. So I'll still take it over the Uncommon for the Vault. And I'll take the Operative, hopefully we don't have to play it, but if we need a 2-drop it's there. Alright. And second pack, what do we open? Krenko is definitely a very powerful card. Could be worth switching to red just for Krenko. We're kind of weighing Krenko versus Toll, Taskmaster, Operative, Dreadmalkin, which I think Krenko's probably better than those cards combined. But there are also some good black cards here, not our Toll. Giant is great, Reaper's great. And a Dam Breaker, which I would also play, Jaya's Greeting in red, would also play well with Narset. This is a close call. So probably gonna take the Krenko anyway, and then we'll let the next few picks guide us. We could pivot into red-black, we could pivot into blue-red, or we could stick to blue-black after all, and then we'll have given up on one of these cards, which... so it goes. I mean, blue-red did seem slightly open based on the last uh, pack, since we did get a few blue-red cards late, like Invade the City, which isn't particularly strong, but it's still kind of a sign that maybe blue-red isn't heavily drafted. Now we can take Spellgorger Weird, which is great. Uh, there's no good blue card. The best black card here is Taskmaster, so we're kind of outweighing Taskmaster versus Weird. So this is another big decision. If we take the Weird, we're committing a lot more heavily towards red, and that probably means we're either dropping black or blue. If we're taking Taskmaster, then we're committing more to black, so we're either dropping red or blue. The black cards aren't very splashable. The blue card I'm willing to splash is probably the Epiphany. Don't really think we want to splash any of the other blue cards. We'll take the weird. And look to play more red cards. Now we're probably looking at Jace's Triumph and solidify the blue cards. There's also Heartfire, which would play well in our blue-red deck, but we don't have any Honored God Pharaohs yet. So in blue-red we don't have any Sacrifice Fodder yet. So I think I'm leaning Jace's Triumph, just take the Divination. Solidify the blue, and then we're probably gonna ditch the black, end up in blue-red. And uh, go from there. Alright, some good red cards. There's also a playable black card here in Giants, but we're pretty happy with either Pyrohelix or Dreadhorde Twins. Which one of those do we prefer? Pyrohelix has more synergy with Narset. It can clear a path for an early Krenko, triggers the Spellgorger weird. Twins just gives us a bit of power and toughness, uh, plays well with Time Twist if we end up playing that. But overall, I think I prefer Pyrohelix. Probably looking at Cyclops here as just a reasonable 5 mana play. A bit of a mana sink can help us pressure opposing Planeswalkers thanks to the ability. Stealth Mission does play well with Krenko. Worth pointing out if we can ever combine those two. We're in business. We don't have any 2 drops yet. Basically anything we can play early so we can go 2 drop into Stealth Mission and kill an opposing 3 mana Planeswalker. 
So yeah, we'll we'll try it out. Haven't played much with this card, but this could be a deck for it when we have Krenko. Alright, pretty happy with Honor the God Pharaoh. A little bit sad that we were giving up on Giant and Reaper, but Honor is great in this deck. Especially if we can wheel one of those hard fires. Plays great with Honor, another cheap spell we can play with all our non-creature spell synergies. And a 1-1 one -one token can also come in handy. I'm probably just going to take the Uncommon for the Vault. Don't see myself pivoting into green anytime soon. Even if we open like a Rolask, I think it's going to be too late to switch. Alright, there's a Heartfire. Pretty happy with that, especially now that we picked up Honor God Pharaoh. Plays well with the tokens from Krenko, so that's going to be our pick. And this could be a deck for Grim Initiate. We have a Heartfire. Uh, we have a stealth mission that we can maybe use on the initiate. It's that versus Cyclops. If we can end up with a second hard fire or even a third one, then we'll definitely want a Grim Initiate. If we don't, then Grim Initiate is pretty medium. Uh, Cyclops might make the cuts since we don't have much top end, but it's not the most synergistic card in our deck. I think I'm going to take the initiate, hoping we can pick up more hard fires. And I'll take the Silver Wing. And Bully is the only card we can cast. And Doubt will need a statue. But those other cards also aren't going to make the cut. Alright. So our deck needs a bit of help. We're lacking in the removal department. We've got a Power Helix and a Heartfire. We're lacking in the two drop department. Needs Prophets and Strixes pretty badly. And we could use some more curve toppers here to help us close out the game. Our playable count is also relatively low because we had to switch colors in the middle of the draft. So hopefully the last pack ties everything together, otherwise we're going to have a bit of a weaker deck on our hands. All right, well, Rawls Outburst is probably one of the best cards we could have hoped for. So that's a slam dunk. Other cards we would hope to wheel, uh, Parahelix. I wouldn't mind an advance, especially if we can curve honor into advance and have a 4-4 token attacking, it's pretty good. Skulker will make the cut as well, another conjurant. But we're gonna take the outburst here. Alright, what about second Narset? Second Narset isn't bad, Narset kinda synergizes with itself since we can find additional Narsets with Narset. But there's also another Pyrohelix, so that's kinda the consideration here. Even totally lost, we wouldn't mind since we don't have much removal for large creatures. Do have a no escape, and that's about it. And we do already have Narset, Timeless Epiphany, and a Jace's Triumph, so we have a lot of card draw already. So I don't think we need another Narset. There is a Samwood Sprint, which also plays well with uh, Kranko, I guess, but I'm not gonna take it here. So yeah, I think I'm gonna take another Power Helix instead, since we have plenty of card draw in our deck already. Alright, some interesting cards here. Could have been our third Taskmaster. But I'm pretty happy with Thunder Drake, which gives us a nice curve topper, plays well with all the cheap spells in our deck that we can cast in the same turn. Uh, wouldn't mind another Heartfire, so that's kind of the pick here, Drake versus Heartfire. I think we need the Drake since we just need more finishers. Another Outburst, alright, so we're finally getting rewarded for making the switch. So easy pick up here. Uh, still not in love with Invade the City, but is there anything else we want here? Samut Sprint for the Krenko Synergies, Invader plays well with Grim Initiate, but that's about it. Don't love the Hellion, so it might be Invade anyway. What's our instant and sorcery count? Not even sure we're playing the Time Twist at the moment. So we've got Double Pyrohelix, Hardfire, Triumph, so that's... Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we've got a decent amount. Is Invader better than Invade? It's close. Like, how many cards do we have that make tokens? The Initiate is the best synergy with the Invader, of course, since it makes multiple tokens. Um, otherwise, I'm, I don't really want to play the Bully, so that one doesn't really count. The token from Honor the God Pharaoh. And that's about it. So Invader looks kind of poor in this deck. The tokens from Kranko, I guess, if we get that going. 
But if we get crank going, we're usually winning the game already. Think I'll take invade, I'm not happy about it, but it might make the cuts, especially if we pick up a few extra instants and sorceries. Very happy with another hard fire. So glad we picked up that grim initiate earlier in the draft. Totally lost might make the cut as well, but I think we want a hard fire for all the synergies. And hopefully we can pick up another card that makes a token we can sacrifice. Strix is a 2-drop we desperately need, since we don't have any early plays otherwise. I would also happily play the Manticore, since it provides multiple bodies for cards like Hardfire. Just put something big in play that we don't currently have. But I think the 2-drop is more important. It's also an evasive creature that can pressure Planeswalkers, which is nice. And... alright, there's some options here. Could take the Cyclops as a Curve Topper, which we don't really have. Although this deck could maybe get away with a lower land count. Could take the Invader now, but we still didn't pick up any additional Sacrifice Fodder cards. Or the Blind Blast as an instant that we can find with our various cards that care about those. And it also cycles. I think it's between Blind Blast and Cyclops here. Yeah, one eye versus no eyes. Pretty happy that the Advance wield. Alright, there's our Summit Sprint for Krenko. Might play Catharsis, but I don't think we have enough creatures to apply enough pressure to want uh, Catharsis. Got an Invader anyway. Alright, so our deck has some issues, but it also has some powerful cards in it. The issues being that we don't have many 2-drops, would have loved a Burning Prophet or 2 or 3 or even 4. Would have played as many Burning Prophets as we could have gotten, basically. We had a decision at some point in the draft, Burning Prophet versus... Uh, the weird. In hindsight, I would have preferred the Prophet, but uh, didn't know how the draft was going to go at that point. Don't think the Assault team is going to make the cuts. Silverwing is questionable. Don't think Catharsis makes it. Could have used more Sacrifice fodder. So here we have Summit Sprint and Stealth Mission that are both kind of support cards for Kranko. Summit Sprint seems questionable with our low creature count, so I'm not too excited about uh, Summit Sprint here. But at least we do have a decent amount of card draw between Narset, Jace's Triumph, Epiphany, Double Outburst, we get to see a lot of cards. So our deck might be able to assemble some interesting combos, like Stealth Mission Krenko, for example. I think I like the mission, I don't think I want to sprint. Probably gonna play 16 lands, since our curve is kind of low. And then we would have a 40 card deck here. Let's take another look. Assailant is pretty bad, but maybe we are just interested in a 2 mana 2-2 at this point, just to have something early to play. Since we do have a lot of card draw, so we just want to make sure we don't fall behind on board. Yeah, we're also a bit lacking in the sacrifice fodder department for Hardfire. We're mostly looking to sacrifice Grim Initiate multiple times, the token from Honor, we can sacrifice a Narset that's about to die, or just another creature in general that the opponent wants to kill. Or if we get lucky enough to make a Goblin token with Krenko, we can sacrifice that as well. But yeah, I definitely would have liked a few more Honors or other enablers for the Hardfire. So yeah, I think this is our deck. 16 lands. It's not great, but it could win some games. And the uh, mana base looks pretty evenly balanced between blue and red. So 8 and 8 seems fine. Let's go for it. Oh, got to change the basic lands, almost forgot. Let's go with this one. And some mountains. Alright, let's go. Alright, look at that curve. Turn to Assailant, turn 3 Krenko, we're playing Goblins here. Perfect opening hand, two removal spells as well, to clear a path. Sadly we're on the draw, this hand would have been basically unbeatable on the play, but we'll have to make it work on the draw here. Alright, please no removal spell opponents, one time. They've got something here. Could be a pump spell, battlefield promotion, time twists, Lazata plating, dismissal. Alright, that's fine. Much rather see the dismissal on our assailant than on Krenko. 
Well, we've got the burn to back him up. Burn's looking at their hand, looking for an answer. Hopefully they don't find one. All right, stealth mission. We did a chat, we get to connect with Krenko. And if we hold full control, we can even attack, make a goblin and then hard fire the zombie before our opponent gets a chance to block. So that's probably what we'll do here. So let's go full control. Attack. Gotta be very careful here that we don't mess this up. Make a token. Resolve. Hard fire. Kill this. Sacking this. And then we get to play the Assailant too. Alright, and now Krenko is off to the races. Opponent missed a land drop as well. If they didn't have an answer last turn, they might not have one this turn. So I like our chances. Contentious plan. Opponent's digging. And the Lynx. All right, we should have this one. So attack with everyone, fine trading assailant for Lynx. Could even parahelix it, but I would rather just play the Cyclops, I think. So let's send. Putin just takes it. Should we play around time wipe? Like, how do we lose this game? Basically, time wipe, we've got four points of burn in hand. And our opponent not blocking with the Lynx in the case that they might have a time wipe in their deck somewhere. I think I'm just gonna say go. Like, even if they kill Krenko, we get to Helix the Lynx, attack for a bunch, and then burn them out. Alright, Kefnut's fine too, but can deal with that. Krenko can attack into it. That also works. So now they're taking eight and they're dead to the outbursts. All right, sweet. Turn three, Krenko gets the job done. And gotta give props to the assailant as well, providing a nice distraction for the Tin Street Spy. Alright, this looks like a keeper. Power Helix on two, hard fire. Doesn't have a creature to sacrifice yet, but that might come from the Epiphany. Visionary, can Parahelix that one, but the weird was a good pickup. And we might be able to Parahelix something else end of turn here. Like this here, Aven Eternal. Initiate plays great with Heartfire. So next turn we might go Thunder Drake and then we can go Initiate plus Heartfire in the same turn to trigger the Drake and the Weird. Contentious plan proliferates, that's fine. Alright, so this was a decent start. Ooh, Liliana's Triumph, usually not a great card but pretty good here. As we only had one powerful creature in play. So that's unfortunate. Still gonna play the Drake here, so we can double spell next turn and start growing it. Pyrohelix, so we could kind of play it slow and this turn play the Strix, so that can get in there too. Or we could just play Initiate, hard fire the Drake right now. Yeah, we could Epiphany, hope to draw a Mountain and then play Initiate, that's also solid. But if we don't draw Mountain, it's pretty bad. 
and I would rather kind of develop my board first before playing Epiphany. So I think I'm gonna go with Strix, Keep Apart, Fire Power Helix. I could attack with a Drake, hoping they block, and then we can Power Helix. Could also just Power Helix a zombie here, honestly. Maybe that's a play, actually. Attack, if they block with Drake, we get to kill it with Power Helix. Otherwise, we get to kill the zombie. I guess that's a good compromise, since we get to deploy the Strix. We don't get to keep apart fire, but considering we have the initiates, we have plenty of sacrifice fodder anyway. And we get to grow the Drake. And next turn the Strix as well. The downside of this play is if they somehow have some hand disruption for the hard fire, then we don't get to kill the opposing Drake, which is the biggest threat. But I think this is a good compromise. Um, any reason not to block the Visionary? Frasca's finisher is the only one I can think of. They did have a bit of a pause, and the Visionary is not blocking anything on the way back, so the only drawback of our opponent attacking with Visionary from their perspective is that they don't get to loot, but they might have a 6-drop they want to play anyway here, like a Tithebearer Giant. It is only one damage, but the hesitation kind of makes me believe they don't have the finisher here. And one damage does add up over time. So yeah, our opponent just had a 6-drop they wanted to play, so they kind of free-rolled the attack with a Visionary. We didn't buy it. Now we are facing a Dam Breaker, but Initiate can chump it for a while, so that's good. And we get to take out a Thunder Drake, which is the biggest problem we're facing. We could just Epiphany this turn instead of Hardfire. Take a bit of extra damage from the Drake, but Initiate can still chump the Dam Breaker while we get in for a big chunk of damage. That might be better here. There's also a chance that Hardfire just burns him out. Let's uh, Epiphany. Alright, so I don't think we need more lands. Weird is okay. So next turn we want to combine hard fire. So if we can find a 3-drop to play alongside it, like this weird, we get to pump the Drake once more. Silverwing can fly over. Advance doesn't do much for us other than triggering Drake and Strix. A 3-3 on the ground doesn't do much. So I think we'll keep both of those. Just so we can hard fire plus weird next turn. There's some nice instants we can get back as well. Play initiate to pump the Drake. Attack for six, and the plan is to chum block the dam breaker. Opponent's at eleven, so what happens if we hard fire their face? They're at seven, and then taking another seven, so they could just be dead if they attack with a Drake and don't have any interaction here. And if they do keep back the Drake or have some interaction, we still have weird plus hard fire as a pretty efficient play. Opponent's digging with visionary. So, it's gonna be a Reaver, that's fine. So really seeing the value of Grim Initiate here, just being a cheap spell we can play after playing one of our many card draw spells, being a chum blocker on the ground while we try and race in the air. So if our opponent has nothing, they're dead. For two mana, what can they have? They don't have a double black up, so Sorin's Thirst doesn't work. Time Twist doesn't do anything here. We do want to make sure to play Weird first, on the off chance that they have another Liliana's Triumph. I guess they could have Plating. Plating can protect creatures. Does it protect players as well? I think it does, since it protects from discard. So yeah, Plating is the only card that can prevent a Hardfire from killing them. The problem here is that we still want to Hardfire main phase to grow the Drake and pump the Strix, so we're kind of forced to go for it. But we're not dead on the way back. So we'll play the Weird before playing Hardfire on the off chance they have another Liliana's Triumph. Then play Hardfire, sacking the token, and hope they don't have Lazata Plating as their last card. Alright, and by my math, they should be dead. Sweet. So... We got there. This draw gets to curve out. Uh, problem is that the cards we're curving out with aren't particularly exciting, but I'm still gonna keep. And hopefully we pick up a hard fire to leverage all these sacrifice fodder creatures. Drawing Krenko would help. 
Wrangler. Alright, so even if they grow the Wrangler once next turn, we get to kill it with Pyrohelix. I think it is worth it to play the Assailant. Do we want to trade 1 damage for 2 damage if they don't play anything that grows a Wrangler? Um, uh, that's close. We are a pretty aggressive deck where you want to try and burn them out, so getting in the 1 damage is relevant. And they might not even want to trade Wrangler for Assailant anyway, so I think we do attack. They do have the crunch, so they have the dream curve for the red-green aggro deck here. Wrangler's gonna stay back, and there's Krenko. Alright, well now we're talking. The issue now is that by playing the Assailants, we didn't power helix the Wrangler while we had the chance, and if we play Krenko this turn, then our opponent might grow the Wrangler out of range from the power helix. So there's a bit of tension here. We want to play power helix and Krenko as soon as possible, but we have to decide. The upside on Krenko is pretty high. Opponent might just play a removal spell to kill Krenko and then we get to kill the Wrangler next turn. If they don't, we can maybe have a window where we get to double Pyrohelix to clear a path for Krenko and get an attack in. We could have attacked with the initiate. If our opponent blocks with Crunch, we can Pyrohelix to kill it, but then we don't get to play Krenko. So I think we'll play it like this and hope for the best. Alright, Honor, that's fine. No attacks, and there's a land, so we could double Pyrohelix. I think what we want to do here is attack with Krenko, see how the opponent blocks. They might just put, let's say, the Raging Crunch in front of Krenko, and then we get to double Pyrohelix the Crunch, saving Krenko to get another attack in. Whereas if we main phase the Pyrohelixes, then our opponent has perfect information on how to kill Krenko, basically. There's some upside to attacking with everyone, actually. Because because we have double Pyrohelix, and one of the damages, even if they block Krenko with Crunch, can go somewhere else. The first strike on Initiate means that we can maybe take out something else alongside the Raging Crunch here. We'll see. And we're getting some goblins on defense, so we shouldn't be too scared. Alright, our opponent plays it extra conservatively here. Double blocking Krenko to make sure it dies. Fair enough. There's not many cards that punish them for doing this. Since we're in blue red, it's not like we're gonna play a battlefield promotion. So yeah, this is fine. So we could just play the silver wing. Mounted on top. Since Nothing really forced us to play the Power Helix on the Crunch that turn. Our opponent's probably going to stay on defense anyway, since they're under quite a bit of pressure. So we might as well wait, maybe combine First Strike plus Power Helix, or a Goblin Token plus a Power Helix to kill the Crunch, get ahead on board first. We do kind of get punished if they have, like, a Fight spell, maybe. Ooh, and a Hab. That's a good card. Can maybe double Power Helix that one. Finding a Heartfire would be great here. That's an incredibly aggressive attack. Conjurant can be a 4-4. Opponent might have like a Jaya's Greeting in mind instead of Pyrohelix. So we could still attack with everyone, see how they block. If they block Crunch and Nahab on two one ones, then we don't get to kill both. But they likely block a little bit differently. Yeah, I think we'll still send everyone. And then we'll see whether we need to power helix Nahab before it does too much damage, or if we just want to play a Conjurant this turn. So this would be a pretty bad block if they wanted to play around, let's say, Jazz Greeting. Not sure if there's anything last turn that made them think we had double power helix instead of Greeting, or just a single power helix, but could just let this happen, or we can double power helix anyway. I think I want to deal with Nahab. So we'll do two here. And then we can either save the Goblin token, or we can deal one additional damage to their face. Opponent's going to be taking 5 damage here to 11. So putting them to an even life total when we have a Silver Wing is pretty relevant. So I think I'll just deal one to their face. This 
say go. And gotta hope that the Silver Wing, alongside maybe a Heartfire or two, can close out the game. Two two druids. Strix is good, not a flyer. So just a silver wing getting in there. I think I'm playing Strix and then just saying go. Like playing Conjurant on the ground could be fine. It's the most mana efficient play, but it doesn't really do much since I have a Raging Crunch anyway. And next turn we get to play the Honored God Pharaoh if we draw, let's say, a land. And I want to honor after we play the Strix so we can uh, trigger it. And with them at 8 life, if we can attack with 4 power in the air twice, they're dead. Do have a lot of burn we're drawing towards, double heart fire, we have double outburst, so a lot of good draws. Alright, so our opponent's gonna try and race, probably implies they don't have much removal for the flyers. Could take 6, I mean we're under no pressure to trade here. What if they play a turret ogre, then we're gonna be sad. But then we might just want to swarm them and burn them out with the top decked heart fire anyway. Could jump the crunch with the initiate. But I don't think we have to jump when we're at 20. No blocks. Alright, Stero and Silverwing. Fair enough. Opponent gets to see our next card. Thunder Drake. It's a good one too. What happens if we attack with everyone? Opponent probably blocks the Strix. Takes 5 down to 3 and then they're dead to any of our burn spells. I think I like that. We could honor first, and then if we draw land plus hardfire, we maybe get to do something else. But we might just attack with everyone and then play Drake and then next turn honor. Seems fine to me. They might block the assailants instead of the Strix, but I think they were gonna block the Strix here. So they're down to three. I think I play Drake. Now we have two flyers that can threaten lethal. And now that they're at 3, we have a lot of time to draw into one of our 4 burn spells that kill them on the spot. I think I'm honoring discarding lands. Like, we might need a land if we draw into Heartfire exactly, but then we just kill them next turn. Not too much life gain they can play. And the Conjurant is probably going to be more useful later. can also play the Conjurant to trigger the Drake. Could be relevant. Alright, there's a Heartfire, so we could have killed them had we discarded Conjurant, but we can just kill them next turn, that's not an issue. Do we play a 1-1 one -one Conjurant? Doesn't seem necessary. So I'll just say go. Like, we could have played a 1-1 one -one Conjurant attack with both, put them to 1, because our opponent would be forced to block the Thunder Drake and take 2 from the Silver Wing, unless they have removal, in which case we might get blown out. But, uh, we'll just pass. Red-green would have to gain life, like a Bond of Flourishing. Or they would have to deal 14 damage to us, which seems unlikely here. The point here is that the 2 damage from the Silverwing should not matter. When we have a Heartfire in hand, so I'd rather just play it extra safe. Manticore, alright. So that should be game. Oh look, another burn spell. Alright, we did it chat, finally. Took us a while to get there. War of the Spark hasn't been too kind to me in the last couple streams. But I uh, finally got back to Diamond at least. Alright, let's see if we can cheese out some more wins with Krenko. No Crank Winner Opener, but got to keep turn 2 Helix, turn 3 pr Triumph, turn 4, turn 5, so nice curve, Triumph to hit our land drops. And then hopefully we find our Cranko by turn 3, but if we don't, we still have a functional hand. Sadly can Power Helix the Hexproof creature, but... Maybe we can kill it end of turn if they tap it for mana. 
All right, well, that's a perfect opportunity. Sneak in one damage. And our opponent stuck on two lands, so killing the mana creature was extra powerful there. Let's draw some cards. Don't have to discard two hand size, thanks to the power helix. I'm gonna decline to play a 0 0 Conjurant, but uh, I appreciate the game asking me anyway. Looks like we're up against the red green. Let's advance. And then we can maybe discard one of these lands to an Honored God Pharaoh at some point. All right, definitely just playing a Cyclops here. Attack would be bad if they double block, so I'm not gonna go for it here. Worm, all right, so opponent's going pretty big as well. And our deck's not great at dealing with seven, six creatures, but we can just make a big Conjurant to try and trade off. The advantage of waiting is that if they have some burn spells, we can potentially sell a Conjurant big enough to trade for the Worm, but even if we have to like double block with the zombie army, I don't think we're gonna be too unhappy. So yeah, let's just play Conjurance. Like, we could stealth mission the zombie army, puts it up to a 5-5, then invade with 4 in the graveyard, makes it a 9-9 unblockable, but we're still not killing them. And then what's our plan? I think this is slightly better. Can still do that play next turn as well. But maybe next turn we'll try and stealth in a big attack. So what do we do if the worm attacks? The like reasonable block would be conjurant, but then if they have a burn spell, we kind of get punished, so we probably have to at least double block. Don't really want to lose the army, considering we have invade the city coming up and we're facing red green, where they have to have mostly burn spells to kill our creatures. Hopefully no fight spells like ambush or band together, otherwise they could still kill a pretty big zombie army. They might also stay on defense, which is fine by me, since we've got Cyclops and Stealth Mission. Worm does attack. All right, so now we have to consider all the different iterations of uh, burn spells and pump spells our opponent could have. Probably just gonna go with the triple block, although triple block is bad if they can then just kill Cyclops and the zombie and leave us with the Conjurant, which is still fine, but not great. But the triple block is the safest to prevent any blowout scenarios, even though we would much rather not lose Cyclops and zombie army to the worm. But if we block with Conjurant and Zombie, let's say they have, I don't know, a hard fire on the Conjurant, then suddenly we're losing both creatures and not killing the Worm. I guess we'll still go with the triple block. We could block with Conjurant and Cyclops, that's also reasonable. There's not much that punishes us, but if they have a band together for the Conjurant, then they kill the Conjurant and they kill the Cyclops for free. So there's one card that punishes us for blocking uh, Conjurant plus Cyclops. So the triple block is by far the safest. Yeah, not blocking, taking seven is also reasonable. I don't think this hand can necessarily win the game. So yeah, they did have a band together. So they get to kill Conjurant and both our creatures. Do they have another burn spell here? That would be a disaster. Wow. Well, that's a blowout. So they get to kill everything and we don't get to kill the worm. Well, it was going to be difficult to beat Greeting plus Band together anyway, to be honest. But uh, now we're just super dead. And that's why instant speed removal is so much better than sorcery speed, since you get to do neat things like that. So, yeah, we're just super far behind. I think I'm just gonna pass and then hope we can somehow string together double Rawls Outburst to kill the Worm. Go from there. So, knowing they had those cards in hand, was there anything we could have done to prevent that? Probably just take the damage from Worm, try and race, but band together would have still killed a giant zombie army token, even if it was like a 7-7 or even a 9-9, they could have still killed with Worm and Prophets band together. 
So we can stealth mission the assailant, get in for four, play a four four in invade the city token. It's probably the best we can do right now. If we find one outburst, we slightly increase our chances of finding the second copy as well. Yeah, we could have kept back the goblin assailant and then attempt to double block. Uh, we couldn't make a 6-6 six -six here since we have to cast the stealth mission before casting invade if we want invade to make a 4-4 four -four zombie. If we invade first, it's only going to be a 3-3. Three -three. Awakening is just going to be game over here, I think. Well, opponents made good use of the four lands they drew. Killing the Paradise Druids sat them back quite a bit, but then the Nurture helped them out. We also drew a few too many lands along the way, but not that drawing an extra spell or two would have necessarily saved us. So this is 16, we're forced to chum block. Arcbow. They should have attacked with everyone here, I think. Alright, GG's. Alright, well we strategically won the first three games, so losing here is not too bad. This is gonna be an easy keep. Turn three Krenko, hopefully. Gonna give up on a 1-1 one, one Conjurant this turn. Might play it as a 2-2, two, two, depending on the situation. I think that's actually reasonable here, since we don't want the uh, Rager to be around next turn, so I would love to trade these off. And if this baits out a removal spell, that's fine by me. Third lands. Alright, deal. Well, that's the best trade ever. So hopefully we can crank our opponent. Like, it is reasonable to play something else first in case they do have removal, but uh, the earlier the better with Krenko. Our window is gonna close pretty soon. Gotta go for it sometimes, and this is one of those spots. Don't have any removal spells in hand to clear a path. Otherwise we could maybe play it slow. Another Tibalt's Rager. And a Chandra's Triumph. Alright, it's too bad. Looks like we're playing against a Mono Red here. If we play the Weird, we're not blocking the Rager since they can just pump it. I mean the Spellkeeper Weird, so we're, we might just play the Spell Gorger first. And then next turn we can decide what to do next. Ogre. Hardfire. Alright, Hardfire was a great draw. Now we get to honor, discard either Weird or No Escape. And then Hardfire the Ogre. Could also discard a land and hope to get lucky. Drawing two cards were somewhat likely to draw lands. Alright, let's go for it. Alright, didn't get there. It's unfortunate. So we'll just have to hang back. Don't think I want to trade Weird for Ogre. But we are taking quite a beating here is the problem. I mean, I guess we're up quite a few cards over opponent. Our opponent is down to two cards in hand. So we could just trade Weird for Ogre and then next turn Hardfire the Rager. Which is kind of a problem here, although I guess Assailant just cleanly trades for the Rager. So that's a reason not to do it. Or we can just take a beating here, next turn go Hardfire, Turret Ogre, play Assailant to block Rager and hope that their follow-ups aren't too powerful. But if we take it, they get to pump the Rager three times, so that's 11 damage down to seven. Opponents playing Monorad, they could have Sarkon's Catharsis in there. I think I'm still gonna take it. There's also a good chance that they just play something else here instead of pumping the Rager three times. I'm gonna pump once, pump twice, pump three times. Let's hope not to get burnt out now. So I think we're gonna go Assailant plus Hardfire. We don't have to hardfire now, 
upside of Heartfinder now is that we get to grow the weird up to a 4-4, which also plays around a 3 damage burn spell. So I think I will Heartfire now. Question is, do we attack with the weird? If they kill Assailant, then we have to block the Ragers. I think we gotta keep the weird back. Otherwise, we're just taking too much damage. But hopefully the Assailant holds and they just don't attack us here. Alright, looks like the Assailant can hold. Now the Power Helix gives us another way of killing the Rager, potentially. We do want to kind of close out the game quickly. Don't have infinite time against a red deck that might have burn spells. So we would do want to apply some pressure. We could just Drake first and then next turn double spell to pump the Drake. That's also a reasonable play. Do we then attack with anything or do we just stay back? Probably just stay back. Alright, let's just play a Drake and pass. No Catharsis end of turn, so that's promising. So I guess our opponent could just be missing a color here as well. And they just drew all mountains. And they're stuck with a bunch of green cards in hand, for example. So that's also another reason to kind of try and close out the game quickly. Drew a land, so now we get to keep up no escape. If we want to put counter on the Drake, we're kind of forced to tap out. Considering our opponent did nothing last turn, I think we're gonna risk it and tap out and then next turn keep up no escape. And then here we can just go weird plus tricks, attack with Drake. Or we could go Weird plus Power Helix kill Rager, but if we kill it next turn we get to trigger the Strix as well. So I think we'll go Weird plus Strix and then next turn kill the Rager. Yeah, if we Helix plus no escape in their turn we would get to grow the Drake, but... I would rather just do this now. And if we can play around Hardfire, we should definitely attempt to do so. Alright, there's a white mana, so our opponent's red-white. But now we've got a nice board built up, so we can hopefully leverage that advantage. Alright. That's a good one. So now the Power Helix doesn't deal any damage. They dealt with our weird. But the Drake can hopefully take out the Wanderer before anything bad happens. If they have a Hardfire 2 here, we're in trouble. Weird can also get back, hard fire at any point. So I'll play the land so we can use Weird, play two mana spell and power helix potentially. So Drake definitely goes after the Wanderer. Let's say they have a hard fire to try and kill the Drake in response, sacking Rager, for example. Then we maybe want a backup creature attacking the Wanderer as well. The Wanderer only prevents damage dealt to other permanent, so we can still use Power Helix to burn out the Wanderer, so if we send the Strix at it as well, then we can still take it out. So this seems fine. We can't no escape a instant or sorcery here. Only works on creatures and planeswalkers. So that worked. Wanderer down. I think I'm just gonna say go. Not a planes. Kind of want to wait until they tap out to kill the Rager with the Power Helix. Do we want to sag the weird end of turn? This is an easy block with Assailants. Don't have to do anything beforehand. Alright, promotion. So now things get interesting. I think we just Power Helix the Rager. If they hard fire, they can kill the Drake, but then we can pump the Drake in response by sacking weird and playing another spell. So they don't get to kill the Drake. So yeah, this seems fine. I guess the Rager dying plus Hardfire would still kill the Drake, but I mean, what's the alternative here? So let's see if they have the Hardfire. If they don't... Down to 6 we go. No life gain since the promotion fizzled. Alright, so now... Do we want to get anything back? I don't think we do. Just gonna untap... Cyclops is good, but might be worth it to keep up no escape at this point. The downside of tapping the weird is if they kill the weird, then we can't sack it in response, but they're probably gonna have to kill the drake first anyway. So this seems relatively safe. Alright, they had a divine arrow. Makes some amount of sense. So if we didn't attack with the weird, we could have sacked it, gotten hard fire to deal 4 damage. Not even sure if that's worth it. 
Now, since we're kind of lacking pressure, I think I'm forced to play the Cyclops instead of keeping up no escape and hope we don't regret it. And go from there. This creature's fine. Can always kill it with a hard fire if we really have to. If our opponent had a Sarkon's Catharsis, would they have played differently at any point? Not necessarily. So that's the card we're kind of concerned with. So we could leave the Strix back on defense if we're afraid of that. Could just attack with Cyclops and Assailant, if they block Assailant. We could sack Weir to get Parahelix. And I don't want to use the Cyclops ability, since I still want to be able to no escape and use the Weird potentially. Could also sack Weird, get back Honored God Pharaoh to dig deeper, discard the land. But I think we want to keep up no escape. I think I do play out the land. So it would have been reasonable to use Cyclops and keep up no escape and then not have the Weird up. This seems a little bit safer to me. Do we counter this? I think we do. It's not necessarily a game-winning play, but we might set up lethal by countering this. Don't think we need initiate, even though it's sacrifice fodder for hardfire. Think we can do better. This creature attacks, we'll block. Another pump spell here. Let's see, are they dead? Six, seven. If we hard fire their face and they don't draw anything off Defiant Strike, then they would be dead. If we get Parahelix, we could still kill this creature and deal one to their face, but then they're not dead to Cyclops plus Assailant. So, could also just hard fire this creature, prevent the draw from Defiant Strike. So, it's an interesting spot. I think I'm getting Heartfire. And then just burning their face, sacking the Strix, and just go for lethal here. Because we have the Cyclops to prevent any blockers, so they would have to draw a removal spell for the Cyclops, essentially. Alright, let's go for it. Alright, we got there. Sweet, so we're 4 and 1, I believe. Not bad, not bad. Definitely beyond my expectations for the deck. Alright, what do we think of this hand? Initiate into Helix into Weird or Honor? Seems fine. Not exciting, but keepable hand. Heartfire plays well with her initiates. So we have two removal spells to choose from. Facing blue-white. Apparition's definitely dying. And then we'll play the weird for now. And then next turn we can honor, and especially if we draw lands, we can discard lands so we don't flood out. It's just honor discarding mountain. And now we've got the 1-1 token to sacrifice. So we're hoping to draw into one of our flyers at some point. One of our creatures that can grow bigger over time, Cranko, weird. Outburst isn't bad, so I think I'm just gonna say go, and then end of turn we can see what we want to do. Alright, they're gonna use a visionary. I think I'm still gonna hold up uh, no escape here, and then fire off outburst end of turn if they don't play into the no escape. Weird can get back nothing at the moment. Could be a problem later, and this is a one for blocker. But I think no escape is going to have more value later in the game. Of course, we do have a weird to get no escape back. But hardfire also kills weird anyway. So I think we let that resolve. And then end of turn all outburst uh, visionary. 
and I'll take the triumph. I'm kind of hoping for a land here. All right, perfect. So now we get to hard fire the weird, sacking the one one, attack for two, and still keep up no escape. Alternatively, we could Jace's triumph, hard fire, and tap out. But if we can keep up no escape, we probably should. And this seems like a fine target for Hardfire, since we still have Weird to get it back. As well as no escape to counter any big creatures our opponent plays. Alright, so we're not dealing a ton of damage, but we are ahead on board. Our hand's not bad. And we've got all of Burn Spells to draw towards as well to help us close out the game. Light Shield feels like bait. Why not sacrifice Initiate? We could have sacrificed Initiate and then we would have ended up with a 2-2 zombie token. But since we might cast more hard fires this game, I would rather have more diversified sacrifice fodder. So we can hard fire multiple times without having to sacrifice a 2-2. Light Shield feels like bait, but if the Light Shield resolves then we don't have any pressure in play. So I think I'm still gonna pull the trigger here. Bottom lands. And a transmutation. Alright. Narset was a good draw. So we could try him first. If we draw land, we could Narset. If we don't draw land, we can Assailant. Although we'll have to tap our mana in such a way that we would basically have to draw an island in order to play Narset. Because if we keep up red and draw a mountain, then uh, we can't play Narset. So I guess maybe just going Narset plus Assailant is better. See what we get from Narset first. Alright, sadly crank on the bottom, play Assailant attack for two. Now our opponent does get to resolve whatever they want, but our hand is still pretty good. We've got a Narset in play, which shuts off any card draw. The reason to play Triumph instead of Narset is that we are kind of digging towards more creatures to increase our pressure, and Narset doesn't help there, whereas Jace's Triumph does. Although I guess we do have Invade the City, as well as... Uh, the 4 mana, a mass 3, which can kind of put a creature in play. Also a reason not to go all in on one big amass creature against the blue deck is of course it could have bound spells, so that can punish us for making a bigger amass token. We'll start with Triumph. Alright, that's a pretty big token. Let's attack. And hope our opponent doesn't have a bounce spell or other removal here. They didn't necessarily have a good opportunity to use Callus Dismissal yet, and there it is, so that's unfortunate. But Parahelix can clear the token. Never mind, 3-3. Three, three. Can just attack with everyone. Helix plus Silverwing. Seems fine. I think we prefer to play the flyer, even though advance hits a bit harder. Triumph, that's a good one to know about, and does get nerfed by the fact that we have these 1-1s. One -ones. Got our opponent low, we have a lot of burn in our deck that we can draw towards, still have another hard fire and another outburst. And we got them all the way to 6, hopefully no life gain. Transmutation Silverwing, alright. Well, Transmutation and Gideon's Triumph is not really a combo. So let's swing with everyone. And then we could sack the Initiate, get a 1-1 Zombie, make it up to a 4-4 with Advance. Don't know if that's better than just sacking, let's say, a Silverwing or a Weird. But a 4-4 might line up better than a 3-3 next turn. So I think I'll still sack the Initiate here. I don't think we're playing around Time Wipe, since if our opponent had one, we probably would have seen it already. And if they do have a spot removal spell, the extra threats could come in handy. And we got our sweet. Alright, so we're 5 and 1. 
All right, another decent hand, and we've got a crank winner opener. No removal to back it up, so that's what we're hoping to draw here. And we're on the draw, so we don't get to live the dream of crank on the play, but gotta keep. Maybe we'll draw our stealth mission that we can combine with Krenko here. Opponent on Sultai. Let's get in there. And it's Krenko time. Alright, no removal end of turn. Four mana for a Bloom Hulk. All right. Ooh, Parahelix. That was a good draw. So now we get to attack with everyone. If they block Krenko, we get to Parahelix to finish off the Bloom Hulk. Now we could wait, but then our opponent's going to play even more stuff, and then that might not line up as well. So I think that's worth it, even though we don't use all our mana this turn. We could just play Drake and then try and go for a Krenko attack next turn. But now we also get to deal with a Bloom Hulk, which is a pretty sizable threat otherwise. So let's get in there. Want to do this before damage, so the Strix gets pumped as well. Alright, so not the best Krenko ever, but better than nothing. The important part here is that we got our opponent on the back foot. Although now, this Saratok kind of stops us in our tracks. So we gotta try and fly over and try and deal those last points of damage before opponent manages to stabilize. There is a reason to hold the land in hand if we draw Honor the God Pharaoh, but if we draw Mountain then we want to maybe be able to play both uh, three drops here to also pump the Drake. Ooh, that's brutal. A 4-5 flyer that also pumps the Ceratoc even more. It's uh, kind of the worst case here. Yeah, I guess we'll take six. So if we go for an all-out attack, opponent blocks Drake, we only deal four damage, we're still only putting them at nine, pretty far from burning them out. Can't even double spell here since we're stuck on one rat, so we don't get to pump the Drake. So we're pretty dead, but I guess we'll play that. So this game we really needed to be on the play basically, opponent did nothing until turn 4 with Bloom Hulk, but because they were on the play, they didn't get punished too badly, because they could just block Krenko. If we get an attack in with Krenko, then we get to make a few more goblin tokens than we would have otherwise. I don't think we win by blocking here. Gotta try and get lucky with our top decks. First put up to 15, and a Cosmina. Conjurant as a 5-5, five five. doesn't really help. We can go Assailant plus a 3-3 three three Conjurant, pump the Drake, kill Kazmina. Should we try and kill Kazmina or just go face? I mean, I don't think we can win either way. But I guess we'll kill Kazmina just to make a point. Druids can proliferate or put a counter on Rolask, and then Rolask by itself is a lethal now thanks to Trample. Or no, never mind, still only 3 damage. So yeah, we can chump Rolask, tramples for 3, and then 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Had they attacked with a 2 2, we probably would have been forced to chump with a 1 1, so they probably should have considered attacking. Um, any reason not to block with the token on the Ceratok? I guess we're dead anyway if they have removal here. So I guess this is fine. And a giant growth. Alright.
blocking with the 1-1 would not have saved us there. That's too bad. Well, sometimes you get royal asked, not much you can do about it. Alright, uh, reasonable hands. We're missing double blue for Narset. But we're on the draw, so we're somewhat likely to find one. So I'll try it. And then, uh, there we go. And then Narset at one loyalty is also good sacrifice fodder for Hardfire. It's a little confusing that Spark Harvest doesn't let you sacrifice Planeswalkers, whereas Hardfire does. So that's a key difference to keep in mind. Initiate a nice card alongside Hardfire as well. I think we'll just Narset, since then it's easier to double spell after we play the Drake if we keep the Initiate in hand, instead of trying to do something fancy here. So let's get in there. Opponent could have a no escape up, but if we're trying to play around it, then... Like, what's our plan? Play Grim Initiate, keep up Hardfire? Wouldn't have been great here. So if they have it, they have it. Alright, don't have a Krenko to go with this stealth mission. Although, how good is Invade the City gonna be? Both cards are pretty weak against bounce spells, we're playing against the blue deck. I think stealth mission probably has more upside. We've got a lot of burn here with hard fire and outburst, so the extra unblockable damage from stealth mission could come in handy. And if we do draw Krenko, we'll be happy. Alright, advance versus hard fire. We would have 11 points of burn plus a stealth mission, so kind of like the Hardfire plan here. We do show opponent that we have a Hardfire in hand, but that shouldn't be an issue. This turn we get to play the Drake, they didn't have no escape last turn, so the Drake is somewhat likely to resolve. I guess they could have a Crush Descent, but so be it. Alright, Crush Descent. If we wanted to play around Crush Descent, we could have just said go, keep up Outburst instead. So they get to kill Narset if they want to. I have my but we're pretty close to just killing them. So Assailant attacks. What are we doing afterwards? We could also Stealth Mission right now, but I think we want to keep Stealth Mission for when the opponent makes some tokens with Sahili first. And then this turn we could just play the Weird, keep up Hardfire, or play Initiate. So let's start by attacking. Ignoring Sahili, of course, since we're on the burn plan. Yeah, I guess I like Weird, play Initiate. Still gonna play out the land, since... We might want to play multiple spells on the same turn. I'm not too worried about having to discard to honor the God Pharaoh. Toll is unfortunate, so opponent went swamp into Toll. Kind of cuts away at our burn plan a little bit, but we still have quite a bit. So we can go a stealth mission, not much that punishes us with double blue from our opponent. And then the Weird can also get back a Burn Spell or a Stealth Mission afterwards. So we can mission the Assailant, get in for 4, put him to 10, and then double Hardfire plus Weird get back Hardfire would be lethal. Now do we keep land in hand? Uh, next turn, let's say we draw another land, then we could Hardfire, Hardfire, Sack Weird, Hardfire. So if we draw Mountain, we could just kill our opponent next turn. So we've got to outweigh the danger of playing a land and having the opponent play more discard, versus being able to draw Mountain to just straight up kill the opponent next turn. I think I'm keeping the island in hand still, but it's a close decision. Could also get back Stealth Mission. End of turn here. If we think the coast is clear. Alright, so our opponent looks pretty dead to me. Single blank, there's nothing that can go wrong. So 
So mission for six. And the stealthy goblin is gonna get the job done here. They know about double hardfire in hand. Sweet. So we're all the way up to six wins. Let's see if we can win the finals here. All right, I think we can keep this. No early plays, but we've been getting pretty lucky in terms of drawing a lot of two drops in the past couple games and the Grim Initiate on turn one as well. So this time we're on the play. We get to make up for the lost card advantage with the Epiphany. Unless our opponent's gonna toll us. Up against the red-black sacrifice archetype, it looks like. Let's uh, lead with weird. And next turn we can maybe epiphany, we'll see. And there's Tybalt, all right. Tybalt is pretty good with uh, Dreadmalkin. Although the weird can attack into the 1-1 one -one token here. Plenty of card draw on our side. Um, do we attack Tybalt? So, Dreadmalkin can sacrifice Planeswalkers, so dealing one damage to Tybalt means that they don't get to sacrifice Tybalt to Dreadmalkin if they want to make another Devil. So there's a lot of value to killing Tybalt here, or dealing one damage rather. So I think we will go for it. Would have loved to add something to the board here, but we'll have to just be happy with drawing a lot of cards. Outburst seems good enough. Bottom of the lands. And Heartfire could come in handy alongside Honor the God Pharaoh. Alright, so we've got a bit of removal, a bit of card draw. We don't really mind if our opponent sacrifices anything to the Dreadmalkin at this point. Since we have two removal spells to deal with it. What's the follow-up? Another Tybalt, all right. I see how it is. Well, good thing we have a 1-4 that can block all these 1-1s. One Ideally, we want to keep up two mana so we can sag the weird in case something goes wrong and our opponent ends up killing the weird. We can still honor, but the 1-1 one -one token would die to the pings from the devils if they sag those to the Dreadmalkin. And then we would be forced to hardfire in response. I guess that's still reasonable, but then they could also just attack. If we block with weird, kill the token, and we kind of need a token with hardfire. So we could just triumph, or we could pass to keep up outburst and hardfire and the weird activation. I think I'm just passing here. And we'll see what the opponent does. Tybalt makes a token. And we'll block the devil. See what happens. They just sack to the Dreadmalkin, then we can kill the Dreadmalkin with the outburst. Alright, they're gonna hard fire our face. Sacking the devil, fair enough. They could also sack Tybalt to the Dreadmalkin here. So that resolves. It would make sense for them to sack Tybalt to the Dreadmalkin here. So I think we wait for that to happen. And now we can outburst. And probably take the no escape. So we're down to nine. And now we gotta try and preserve our life total as much as possible. So going for Honor the God Pharaoh here could be fine. What do we discard? Probably a land still. And then we get to keep up No Escape, Hardfire and Spellkeeper weird ability. I guess we could also draw Grim Initiate and still want Hardfire up. So maybe we should keep up Double Red. So we'll Pharaoh, discarding Mountain. All right, say go. Don't necessarily want to lose our 1-1 here, but if they attack, I'll block. All right, I guess we'll make these blocks. 
Hard fire our face again. Jeez. That's a lot of damage. Like, sure, we could hard fire the token and go to three. But then we would have to sack our spellkeeper weird. Which doesn't seem great. So I think we just gotta take the one. I guess another one from the devil. So we would be at two. And then one if the devil dies. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. And then do we sack the weird end of turn to get back one of our cards here? Could get back outburst, could get back honor. We're dead to another burn spell anyway, so we can't play around those. So yeah, I think we do sack. And then outburst versus honor. Honor makes a 1-1 one -one token. Can become bigger with advance. I think I take outburst still. And let's see if we're dead. Not yet. Alright, Power Helix could have been useful earlier. So I think the play is going to be advance, keep up all our different interaction, including no escape and Power Helix. Sounds decent. But we're in trouble if our opponent has any more burn. It's two Tibbles and two hard fires to the face. Cruelty, so now we could hard fire to kill the devil. I guess that makes more sense than using Power Helix since we don't have any sacrifice fodder otherwise for these hard fires. So kill this, sank this. Down to one. Opponent has two cards in hand. It's gonna be close. Hellion, that's fine. Alright, I can live with 2-2 uh, two, two Hellion. Got a ton of options. If we can, we want to keep up no escape, which means we have 5 mana remaining. Let's start with the Power Helix in case they somehow have a pump spell to save the Hellion, then we might want to do something else. I guess Triumph could draw us into a creature to block with, but we'll probably have to kill the Hellion anyway. We have plenty of removal in case they play a Flyer, for example. I think this is fine. And this way, if they have, like, the indestructible trick, we could still respond with an outburst, potentially. Alright, now we can triumph and then play land, keep up no escape. Alright, so still at one, still dead to any burn spells. Don't think we can prevent that from happening. Initiates, oh boy. I think we might actually want to no escape that, since it's a 1-1 one -one that when it dies makes another 1-1 one -one and we don't have any blockers currently. It feels bad to have to no escape a 1-1 one -one here, but I think it's right. And yeah, I'll keep a Silverwing, I just want any creature basically. Alright, let's play a Silverwing. And keep up Outburst, I think I'll keep land in hand now. Although we already cast Honor, but they might have like a Davriel. Uh-oh. Well, our opponent's gonna get back Tybalt, and I think we're dead. Yeah, I didn't think we can prevent that from happening. Wish we still had our no-escape now. Do we have any bounce spells to bounce the Devil so it doesn't trigger? I don't think we do. Gets back Tybalt Hellion. Yup. Can outburst the Tybalt. But I don't think we have anything we can draw towards. Like, at 20 life we're not going to be able to burn them out if we go face here. There's Krenko, a little bit too late, sadly. We do have the stealth mission to combo with it, but uh, yeah, it's too bad. I guess I There's our initiates. If only we had found the initiate sooner, then we wouldn't have been forced to counter the opposing initiates, and then we could have uh, maybe saved the no escape for Tybalt. Then again, let's say our opponents had more 
Heartfire's in their deck, also getting rid of the creature there is valuable. And otherwise we would have been forced to Rolls Outburst to 1-1. One, one, and then hope to draw a creature when our opponent might be holding more removal spells anyway. So I don't think we necessarily made a mistake. Just a judgement call that didn't work out. Yeah, if we could target the opponent's creature and they didn't have a Hellion, we could make this a 3-3, chomp it with the Initiate and the token we get from Initiate two times. And in the meantime, do some damage with Krenko. Or if they didn't have Hellion, we could hard fire the blocker in response to the Devil attacking after blocking to prevent uh, the Devil dying and us taking one damage. So we still had some play, but the Hellion means that I think we're pretty dead. So yeah. Oh well, we tried. And <laughs> Davriel as well. And the Hellion, yep. GG's. Close game. Almost would have been able to take over here. Just needed a bit more life to work with. Oh well, close games all around, and for a deck that I wouldn't rate particularly highly, we still made it pretty far. So can't complain with uh, 6 and 3 here. Let's claim our prize. And got a nice God Eternal Kefnet for our troubles. Not bad, not bad. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.